What's up guys, it's Mari here with First Updates Now. And on this segment of Behind the Bumpers, I'm here with 180 Spam. We're in the Hopper division at Worlds. This team was winners at the first two of their events and the finalists at the last. Their robot includes um, a floor intake, which intakes from either sides, a pivoting indexer, as well as a sh pivoting shooter and an amp mechanism. Find out more on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So we're going to be starting off with Zach here and he's going to give us a little bit of a rundown of the robot. Tell us a little bit about you all's floor intake. So starting off their intake, we're double sided. Um, originally at all three of our first events, we only had this side of our intake. It's a full bar that feeds into our, our intake, into our index. So our index will pivot down and pick up the note. And then on the other side, which is what we added here at Houston, is a semi, semi bar intake that the index pivots down and also grabs from. It feeds into our pivoting shooter as well as our amp arm. Um, so what sparked you guys to create a second area for your floor intake? Originally, we had planned for two intakes, but it just wasn't working out at the time. But now we have it so we can easily clean up in our wing line when someone feeds us. That means we have 26 minutes. That is incredible. Do you think you can show us a little bit about um, how it intakes from both sides? Team 5813 yep. in Johnson needs two eclips for a half inch round shaft. That again is 5813. Means two from the right. For a half. Yeah. Updates for tomorrow. Hits so, as you see, it feeds into the index and it can feed into the amp arm very quickly. Shoot out. 7 a.m. will be the announcement of the impact award finals. And then. I like that. It is very efficient. So, on this robot, I've been told at the very beginning that they have three different beam breaks. And I was wondering, because of the fact that you have two different floor intakes, how that kind of helps out with that. Yeah, so um, on our indexer, we have two beam breaks, one on the um, amp side and one on the shooter side. And then we also have one on our amp arm, which is a retroflective um, beam break. And so every time we intake, like and during auto, um, we we're able to see if once we reach our set point, if the beam breaks were hit, and if the beam breaks, beam breaks were not hit, then we know, oh, we need to bypass or go to the next note, which is available. And so once that note is available, or once it gets hit by the beam breaks, then we know, oh, it hit the first beam break. Now we can settle it all the way in to the second beam break, and it's ready to shoot. Um, so we use that in auto, especially, um, to make sure that we can get maximum amount of points in auto. Um, we had inspiration from 2056 watching their autos um, because we like we love seeing how they kind of bypass. So we wanted to we took inspiration from that, and it was it definitely helped us with auto. Speaking about y'all's autos, I see this cool simulation on y'all's screen. How about you tell us a little bit about that and show us? Yeah, so we have different simulations. So um, here's one of the one that we like running. Uh, we do shoot on the fly, our preload, and the first uh, wing note. We come out, we grab the first note here, we come in, shoot it. Um, we also come out and grab that one. But then here, we can do a cleanup since we have a front intake. Um, and so if our line smarters can't do like these three notes, we can just clean up those in case. Or we have another one where you actually just come out, which is when we've been running like almost the entire event. 
uh, we just come out, we do these three, if not grab extras if they get taken. Um, we also have a source side, or sorry, a source side where we come out, shoot in the fly, they're preload, we come in, pick up that one, shoot it, and then do that for the next three, four notes. And we just stay out in the center line for that. And then we also have our cleanup, which is sort of like a basic four wing note, or four notes in the wing auto, and then we come out and grab a fifth. Um, if you have time, it does go for the sixth, but I mean, we haven't been able to run it, so we don't know if it goes for it. Um, and here is our bypass, where, so if that note was missing, it was bypass the next one, and then keep going. And so, since we have modular, um, like, auto pass for each note, we know exactly, like, where to go, especially for, like, which side. Because we know that teams, like, running on their stage as well. And so that's why if we bypass, we'll always run around and not under the stage when we're coming in. It really feels like a lot of y'all's programming is an effort to make the driver's life a lot easier. Yeah. So I noticed you guys have some cameras. I assume that that's what that's about too? Yeah. So we have our main limelight here. Um, it's for our speaker, um, or shooting the speaker. Um, so we base it off of um, the distance from the speaker and as well, or also the uh, pixel height. And so depending on those two things, we know where we are in the field and like what our RPM and angle needs to be on our shooter. And then we also have another camera here just for our driver or me. Um, and so I use that for really like blind spot pickup because one thing we noticed is that um, if we're in a far station from the amp, we can't see notes that are against that wall. And so we use this camera to do blind spot pickup in that corner. So, climbers. So, our climbing system is pretty simple to be honest. So, we have a servo that pulls back a pole and it spins this motor, which releases a string, which releases, which releases a string, and a constant force spring pulls it up all the way. And then we have that on both sides. And then once we're up all the way and on the chain, the Neo just pulls it back. And then at our first three events, we could not trap at all, and that was reflected heavily in our RP. So we took inspiration from teams we saw online, and we added a leaf blower onto our onto the front of our shooter, and we have about an 80% 80, 80 success rate in ideal conditions. Um, and then a little bit more about our shooter. At our first event, we had a full row of wheels, or a, we had wheels on the front too, but we noticed that we were shooting inconsistently because we did not have any spin at all. And it was really wide. So these bars would shake and it would bend it would bend the aluminum. So what we did is we had a mentor come in with a high speed camera and we watched how it shot notes out. And we realized that our intake was grabbing onto it for too long, which affected our consistency. We also noticed that we have absolutely no spin, which makes it so we're even less, less consistent. So what we did, is we took off these wheels completely, which completely spins it and we're a lot more accurate. We also added in a spacer on both sides, which compresses the note more and lets it shoot better. And then on our intake point of view, we, narrow, we narrowed it down about, I would say 20%, so we can intake from both sides, but that also, but that also, stops the intake from holding on to the note like at all and then down at the bottom at the beginning of the season when after we first built the robot we noticed that notes weren't going under in under the robot which is kind of important when you have an under the bumper intake so we look we recessed our swerve modules by about half an inch and to help intake we had we have 3d printed swerve guards that help guide the note into the middle of the robot. Accessibility and ease of life in the field is something that's really good. And we know that spam can, no pun intended. But thank you so much for letting us have you on this episode with you guys. And good luck at the rest of the competition. Bye. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. 
Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.